This is the fourth section of the linear transformation chapter, and this is about successive transformations. So this is about carrying out one transformation followed by another. And the most important thing about this is the order in which you do it. So let's say I've got two transformations, matrices P, and let's say this is the transformation that I do first, first transformation, and then Q represents the matrix of the second transformation. And what I'm doing is doing a transformation of the points X, Y. So this is where I start. Now, the order that we do it to find the new points is that the transformation matrix we do first needs to be the one next to the points. The transformation that you do second needs to be the next furthest away. Okay, so this is the first transformation, this is the second, and then obviously we would sort of multiply this out. Maybe we'd, we would multiply these two together first. Yeah, and then once we've done that, then we'd multiply it by this one. But the important thing is this, the first transformation, the first transformation uh, needs to be the one, needs to be the one closest to your uh, image points, oh sorry, your object points, the ones that you're starting with. They need to be close. You get the order wrong, you'll get the wrong answer. It's a bit like functions. Do you remember when if you had something like this? Yeah, remember this one you do first, this one you do second. It's similar type of thing. Yeah, you can think of a like a transformation, almost like a, a function. Yep. Okay, so on this one, we're going to find a two by two matrix T that represents, first of all, a rotation through 90 degrees anti-clockwise about the origin, followed by a reflection in the line Y equals X. So I'm going to quickly work out what these two matrices are. So let's start off with the rotation matrix or the one that's 90 degrees. Now, a quick way of doing that is to draw one zero, zero, one like that without drawing it on the grid. Rotate those two points 90 degrees. So the red one goes there, the green one goes here. So when I write my matrix, for this now remember the green one goes in the first column so that's one zero the sorry the red one goes in the first column because that's the one zero that's what it started as and the green one goes in the second column which is going to be oh actually this should be uh zero one should know my coordinate zero one and then this one's going to be negative one zero so that's the rotation let's do the same with the reflection in the line y equals x so let me draw the points one zero zero one the line y equals x is going to be a line like this okay so what's going to happen is the red one will get flipped up here and the green one will go over here so let's write down what those points are remember the green uh, the red one goes in the first column so that's going to be zero one one zero like this if I want to find a matrix T, I need to multiply these together, and the order is important. Now, when you do transformations, you start with the first one here on the right, and you work your way to the left. Yeah, the same order we would multiply them in if you wanted to uh, apply two transformations to a single point. So the first transformation, which is the rotation, that's the matrix we write last. So that's going to be um, the rotation 0, negative 1, 1, 0. And the second transformation, that's the one we write to the left first. So 0, 1, 1, 0. So all we're going to do now is multiply them together. So we'll have 0, 1. We'll have um, 0 here. Then down at the bottom, we will have 0 again. And then we will have negative 1. So this represents um the combined effect of both transformations now in part b we want to write down what 
uh, transformation, single transformation is represented by T. So what we do is we look at the points uh, 1, 0, 0, 1 and see where they go. So the first column is 1, 0. So that ends up there. Now the second column is 0, negative 1. So that ends up down there. OK, so I need to work out what transformation is going to take those two points that I started with down to the two points that I finish with. Yeah, so how am I getting from here to here? Now, it's not a rotation because the order of the colors isn't correct. So it's definitely not a rotation. So, um, oh, actually, I can see now it's a reflection, isn't it? It's a reflection. Reflect those points. They go down there. So this is a reflection in the line or in the x-axis or the line y equals zero. So reflection in the x-axis, which is the line y equals zero. OK, so we've got a matrix here representing enlargement of scale factor K followed by rotation through angle theta about the origin. Find the value of K. Now on this one, um, it's only going to be the enlargement that changes the area. The rotation will not change the area. So we can use the determinant of this matrix okay and that will give us the area scale factor and we can do that because the rotation will not change the area scale factor only the enlargement will so let's work out the determinant which is going to be ad so minus 2 root 2 times by negative 2 root 2 ad Oops, bracket in one place. AD minus BC. So they're all negatives here. Negative 2 root 2 uh, times um, 2 root 2. That's the only one that's not negative. So let's work that out and see what we get. So doing that on our calculator, we get 16. Right, so 16 is the area scale factor. If we want to find the scale factor, we need to square root the area factor. So this is from GCSE as well. So scale factor um, is equal to basically the square root of the area factor. Or you could say the scale factor squared is the area factor. So the scale factor, let's just put SF is equal to square root 16 which is 4 so the value of k k equals 4 part b determine the value of theta now what we've got here is enlargement of scale factor 4 which is this matrix here where we're scaling in both directions by 4 and that gets multiplied by this rotation matrix. OK, and this rotation matrix, the general form is going to be cos theta minus sine theta, sine theta, cos theta. And we know that that gives us this matrix, the negative 2 root 2, 2 root 2 negative 2 root 2, negative 2 root 2. OK, so our job now is to multiply this out and see what we get. So if I start with the top row, I will get 4 cos theta and then a 0. So 4 cos theta equals negative 2 root 2. I don't need to do all four of these. I just need two of them. Um, and uh, let's do the bottom one to get 4 sine theta. 4 sine theta equals 2 root 2. Now we're doing this just in case there's any ambiguity about the size of the angle. 
So for this one, theta is going to be the cos inverse. Um, actually, let's write down before we just jump working that cos theta is negative 2 root 2 over 4. And sine theta is going to be 2 root 2 over 4. So there, from there we'll find theta. And if there's any differences between the two, we'll look at the signs of uh, sine theta, cos theta, and uh, use that to help us. So we will do the cos inverse of negative 2 root 2 over 4. That gives us 135 degrees. Let's see if we get the same with sine theta. So um, sine inverse of uh, 2 root 2 over 4. Right, so that gives you the 45 degrees there. So remember we used this method before. Uh, so if I look at cos, if I look at sine, um, the cos theta value was negative. Okay, so this tells us that the angle must be greater than 90 here. And although we got um, 45 degrees, the reason we got that is because um, we could have either one of these two values here. Yeah, for sine, and it's the second one. That one is the 135. So um, the value of theta is 135 degrees. Right, you should now be able to do exercise 7D on pages uh, 141 to 144. Just need to remember that when you've got transformations of maybe a point or a number of points, uh, this is going to be your first transformation here. Transformation. And your second transformation will be here, second transformation. So this will be the order in which they go.